Greetings, ladies and gentle readers. I'm Dwyer, and I just finished reading Rune Seeker, a lit RPG adventure by J.M. Clark. If that name is at all familiar to you, it is very, very likely that that is because you might recognize it from Mark of the Fool, same author. It's also the reason why I was fairly, fairly certain this was going to be a relatively decent read, unless he's lost his marbles. I'm happy to say he did not. Uh, the book, in a nutshell, is The Everfail Will Rise. The Everfail is uh, Hiral. That is the main character. The problem with the main character, as you know, it states here, is that he's the weakest on the flying island of Fallen Reef. That right there, I did enjoy. Creating a world where people are living on flying islands is both very imaginative and also very, very difficult to get correct. It's something that you can easily type out, but how that f island is actually going to function in practice, I, I would imagine would not the easiest thing to do. It'd be something that a lot of the, uh, let's just say, some other lit RPG writers would very, very quickly type out, and the world would feel extremely flat because it wouldn't go beyond that. But here we have an interesting added little twist because there is a kind of like a two cast system sort of there's people who are living on the top island and then there are people living on these sort of bottom islands and those bottom island people venture down into the surface to the surface sorry for vital resources uh, that the top islanders need so it's an interesting little dynamic there magic in this system at, or magic in this series rather as stated they're powered by the sun that's really really fantastic but unfortunately for our main character he can't seem to use the magic any of his people can very 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 unfortunate there he has a this isn't really a spoiler we find out immediately he has um a parent who is like top end at i mean it's not really a, a spoiler because it's you can kind of see it right here in uh, the happy little drawing on the cover. You can see those like little light lines that are going uh, up and down. Yeah, they they like scribe themselves with like these little uh, meridian lines, I believe they call them. And his father is like the best at doing that. So he's got like the best of the best to try to give him all of the advantages possible. And it's just not working out for him. And the book is about, you know, why is that? Blurb once again mentions that he will have a path forward to finding out why that is. He just needs to go to a dungeon on the surface where, you know, the top islanders never really go in order to unlock the secrets behind that kind of thing. So immediately we have a book with multiple levels of intrigue. We've got like the top islanders and like they're doing what they're doing. You got like the bottom islanders and they're doing what they're doing and then you've got the surface and why it is dangerous to go down there and why no one really ventures too deep into these uh dungeons and you want to know more about that and how that's going to interact with the main character so he can be doing what he's doing so this like triple layer uh sort of cake of lit rpg here is really the pull of the story i definitely couldn't really call this book a flat read a two-dimensional read because it's from the ground up you have this like triple layer of the world and as it exists now added on top of that there's like another layer of well un unless you're brain dead you know what's going to happen there's obviously going to be a very very big bad reason why they don't go to the surface and stay there right because there's going to be lots of danger involved and sure enough, there is a big bad reason why they don't go down there. So you got like these four layers in this world, characters going through it. It's pretty cool. Overall, good ideas. Now, not everything about this book is the most fleshed out thing in the history of ever. But enough of it is that it's just like, hmm, okay. That's cool. Let's see what happens next. Other things, not everybody is immediately on team main character. A lot of people on the top island, for example, I don't like him so much because getting all this preferential treatment from one of the uh, top, you know, line inscriber dudes, and they want that to be them, without, despite the fact that 
he doesn't, you know, have any power, and they really resent that. The mid, I sorry, the bottom islanders have a bunch of secrets. They don't want him around either because then they'll know their secrets, and he really has to work to be like accepted in any of these tiers. And then we get to the bottom where everything is like upended again. It's just cool. It's just cool. Now a lot of people in lit RPG space might not like that too much because they really really like power fantasies where the main character is like instantly overpowered and everybody loves him with the exception of like the one mustache twirling villain who is just like you know out to get him but yeah this isn't this isn't that story this isn't that story at all or they enjoy like the books where the main character doesn't need anyone else and that is also again not not the case here so this came out in 2023, has a nice 2,500, oops, scroll up a bit more, thank you, nice 2,500 rating, so it's doing really, really well. Will it ever do as well as some of the very, very top tier? Probably not. It doesn't have, like, the comedic slapstick of Dungeon Crawler Carl, so if you like that, you're for that reason where there's, like, comedy everywhere and, you know, punchy one-liners, then you're probably not going to like this one. And it's not like uh, Primal Hunter, where you know it's just one guy going down to the, going down to the surface all by himself and you know, beating everything up. So uh, those are two very very vocal and popular camps in the lit RPG space, and I can see diehards of those maybe not liking this one for for that particular reason. But overall, I think this is a lit RPG with a decent story and a decent plotline and a questioning of what's going to happen next that, let's be real, you don't get in Dungeon Crawler Carl or Primal Hunter. So I, I think, uh, for my money, I'm more likely to reread this because it has more going on. It has more interesting characters. There's a world that feels fleshed out and given a lot of thought to. So yeah, overall, I like it, and it completely gets my recommendation. I will be reading book two, just not immediately, because I did pick a few other things uh, to read first. Now, to that end, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There were a few things that I did. It's not that I didn't enjoy them. It's just I enjoyed other things a little bit more. Uh, for example, you know that there are dungeons in this series, and they're going to play a pretty powerful role in leveling the characters in the series given what's learned in the book. I think I managed to get through there without giving away spoilers. The only thing is dungeons have a way of not being able to really provide tension to a story when there is an outside mechanic that is arguably more important. For example, there's the outside big bad stuff that's going on. We know most of the tension is going to be dealing with that and not really in the dungeon so much. So keeping that same feeling is a little bit rocky. Uh, for example, right here, it says, In a moment of danger, Hral unlocks an achievement with a special instruction. Access a dungeon to receive a class-specific reward. The whole scene of this danger that they're referring to, in my opinion was a much more tense situation than almost any of the dungeons that they go through. There is another instance later on where they're taking notice of the big bads in the area, and the big bads in the area are taking notice of them, and they've kind of got to do a little bit of hidey times from the big bads. And I thought those were more tense situations. And I thought that dungeons were mostly interludes, like between those tense moments if that makes sense. That said, they were interesting in their own right. They didn't drag on too long. This isn't a story about simply going and doing dungeon diving. Like, um, what was it called? Uh, uh, I don't remember it. Uh, guy, Hero of the Valley or something, where it goes and gets teleported to elsewhere and just proceeds to dungeon dive the entire series. Uh, yeah, that, mm, you know, by himself, primal hunter kind of style. That, eh, it, that's not what you're going to find here. 
this is a story that has dungeons in it. This isn't a story about dungeons. I guess is a good way of explaining it. So yeah, I recommend it completely. I'd probably give it a, let's see, for having a decent plot line, for having competent world building, um, dialogue that doesn't feel stupid, I'd probably give it maybe an 8. I'd, I'd probably get an, a, a solid 8 out of 10. It's not the best series I've ever read, but it is definitely above average, so it's probably a 7 or an 8 out of 10. I would probably go ahead and give a good old Rune Seeker here. So that's that gets my recommend. If you read it, let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it. And as always, on to the next book.